Hey, what's up guys? This is my review of the new Leupold VX3 HD. Now this one that I have here is the four and a half 14 by 40 second focal plane. Now I know a lot of guys out there kind of turn their nose up at second focal plane. What the hell? Ever, ever, ever. But for me, when I hunt, I use second focal plane because on the low end, the reticle tends to disappear, especially in low light. Now that's not what we're using today when we're testing it. It is bright as it can be out here. But in low light, you can lose a first focal plane reticle on the low end. With a second focal plane, you don't have to worry about that. Now here's what we'll do. We'll look at it downrange. I'll show you the features of it up close. My big ass will be right back. All right, now guys who watch my channel regularly know that I feel like unboxing videos are against nature, so I don't do them. But here's a look at all the stuff that comes in it. And of the stuff that comes in it, the little rubber bikini caps and the low profile throw post for the power lever that you can see right here is a super freaking nice touch. Now you got to give it to Luapo. When it comes to the finish, to the presentation of their scopes, they're kind of in a class all of their own, especially when you consider the price of this scope at the time I'm making this is $750. Now the cool thing about this eyepiece, it's on really fine thread so you can get it exactly where you want to get the reticle focused and with the locking ring that's on it, you don't ever have to worry about it moving. Now the throw lever on this thing is really nice and it only takes 90 degrees to go from four and a half all the way up to 14 power. Now the side focus right here is something you're gonna start seeing more and more on scopes as time goes by. Again, 90 degrees to go all the way from 50 yards to infinity and it's not marked. So many guys send scopes back because the yardage doesn't line up. That's not really for what it's for. It's there to set the parallax. All right. Now on the turrets, it's MOA and it's one quarter MOA per click and it's really, really precise. Now on the top turret, what I did is I raised it up so that I could get the full range of revolution to do all my tests with. Now under normal circumstances, you would zero the scope, loosen these two screws up and then drop the turret down to where the zero lock locked. Now the beauty of the turret on this particular scope right here, you can see where the two things engage each other is once you get it all set up, you screw everything back down, you can run your elevation up and it'll bring it right back to zero. Me personally, I zero my rifles, especially my deer rifles for about 150 yards. That being said, on an average rifle, this is going to give you close to 800 yards of elevation. That's more than you need. If you need more than that, then you could raise the turret up and you don't have to worry about it. Now, right here on the side turret, again, it's clearly marked, very precise. Everything on this thing tracked really, really well. Leupold knows what they're doing. I mean, it's just that simple. They know what they're freaking doing. There's a look at the front of the scope. All right, let's check it out downrange. All right, now everything that I'm testing here is done at 100 yards. Showing you a couple of magnifications with a snapshot through it to give you a better idea of the resolution you'll get through this scope. Now right here on the highest magnification, you can see that all of the hash marks on the windage line up perfectly. Now right here, I'm taking the magnification, running it from the low to the high end. And believe it or not, there are still scopes out there, especially second focal planes, almost exclusive second focal planes, that when you run the magnification up and down, you'll see a dramatic point of impact shift. You don't have to worry about this with a scope like this. Now right here, I'm gonna do the vertical tracking. I'm basically running it all the way from stop to stop. This thing's got plenty of elevation and plenty of windage on it. Once I get through, I'll bring it right back to the center, make sure that it repeats and make sure that it stops because a scope that won't take you right back to where you started, it's useless in my opinion. This one, you don't have to worry about that. Every Leupold that I've tested, other than one or two of their really budget scopes, have performed flawlessly. Now right here is the windage. I'm gonna run it all the way out from stop to stop. Again, right back to center when I get through with it. And this will give you kind of an idea of the clarity. I wish that the image downrange through the scope showed what I was actually seeing with my naked eye. But it was so bright that day that it's kind of blowing out the image. But believe me, that's not Leupold's fault. Right back to zero. 
All right, the box test, I'm running at one revolution in each direction. I will bring it right back to zero. Again, it's going to nail it. I wouldn't expect anything else. Maybe, there we go. I thought it was a little right, but once I zeroed it, it was right back on track. Now right here, you can also see what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it up and down 10 MOA. Now those red dots or orange dots are exactly 10 MOA. Now it's really close, but it's not dead nuts on. But then again, you're talking about a $750 scope here, not a $1,700 scope. So it's getting super close, but it's not perfect. Right there at the bottom, you can see it. It'll come up just maybe, I would guess one eighth of an inch off. But for a scope in this price range, man, I just can't tell you how hard it is to find a scope that'll do what this is doing at this price. It nailed it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Now below, you're going to see a link to Leupold. You can go on there and look at all of their different scopes. There's quite a few in this particular scope line. And something that I really dug about it, they didn't try to make this scope semi-tactical, semi-this, semi-that. It's a long-range hunting scope that gives you a zero stop so you can bring it right back. It's got marks on the reticle for windage, the cap windage, which is great for hunting. Like I say, this is a long range precision hunting scope. Guys like me that live in the timber, it works for you too, but guys that are able to shoot longer distances, this is a really, really good buy.